Starting pitchers, sleepers, breakouts, and busts. Up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5 on a Wednesday, February 21st. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's do one of each. Sleeper, breakout, and bust. You're up first, Scotty, with a sleeper. I want to highlight one of the players I love, if you remember from the Valentine's Day episode, Eric Fetty, because people are totally sleeping on him. I mean, I'm, I'm getting him in the last round or two of every draft and thrilled to do it. He was the best player in Korea last year. Uh, it, was, it was his one year there, totally dominated the league with a 20 and six record, a two ERA, a 0.95 whip, 209 strikeouts in 180 and a third innings in a league where there aren't a, little, a lot of strikeouts. He had a lot. And not only did he dominate there, but he completely changed his arsenal before going there. So the Eric Fetty, you remember, who pitched for the Nationals, does not exist anymore. Put him out of your mind. No reason to bring him up again. This Eric Fetty, completely different. Introduced a sweeper that was responsible for all those strikeouts. Introduced a split change that has been compared to Logan Webb's. And that's an interesting comparison because Logan Webb led the majors with a 62.1% ground ball rate last year. Eric Fetty's in Korea was 70%. Obviously, numbers aren't going to translate perfectly. Not going to have a two ERA. Probably won't have quite a 70% ground ball rate. But I think Eric Fetty's going to be pretty good. He's going to surprise a lot of people. Remember, Merrill Kelly was nothing in fantasy before his stint in Korea. And his numbers over there weren't nearly as good as Fetty's were. So I'm excited about Eric Fetty for the White Sox. And he is going incredibly late in drafts 385.2 is the ADP as the 110th starting pitcher off the board sleeper for me is going to be Shota Imanaga uh, 60th starting pitcher off the board 212.6 is the ADP came over from Japan this offseason signed a four-year deal with the Chicago Cubs he generates whiffs with great control from the left-hand side he has this vertical approach fastball with a sweeper and a splitter you don't see many splitters from the left-hand side in Major League Baseball. So I think it's going to be a new uh, approach and, and something different that hitters haven't seen before. And according to Eno Saris, Imanaga had the highest stuff plus in the World Baseball Classic last year. That's right, even higher than Yoshinobu Yamamoto. Very small sample size, but I love getting Imanaga outside of the top 200. Scott, let's slide over to a breakout. Who you got? I'm going with Nick Pavetta here. Nick Pavetta. I mean, you could argue he already broke out. I just think he's going to sustain it now full-time in a starting role. What happened for him last year? Uh, second half, a 3.30 ERA, a .96 whip, 12.5 K per nine. Obviously elite numbers for a whole half of baseball. True, he was pitching out of the bullpen for part of that time, but it was more like a, like a bulk guy out of the bullpen. Multiple inning stints, sometimes followed an opener. Um, and notably he, he was bumped to the bullpen because of well, the same problem he's had his whole career command. He wasn't throwing enough strikes, only 63% when he got moved to the bullpen in mid May. But then from that point forward, Pavetta had a 66% strike rate. Uh, it, it, he worked a lot with Chris Martin, a great strike thrower in the Red Sox bullpen on, um, on his on attacking hitters on mindset for that. And it seemed like the, the control rubbed off on him in that way to the point that when he finally did return to the rotation late in the year, Nick Pavetta's final two starts, seven innings in each, a combined five hits, two walks, 17 strikeouts over those 14 innings. Red Sox seem excited about him. I'm excited about Nick Pavetta too. And somebody I'm excited about, Michael King from the now San Diego Padres, was traded over in the Juan Soto deal this offseason. He's the 43rd starting pitcher off the board. The ADP is 151. His final eight appearances last year with the Yankees, 188 ERA, 110 whip, 48 strikeouts over 38 and a third innings. Love the pitch mix. Mid-90s on a sinker. Great sweeper. Great changeup. There is a lot of injury risk, and I get that, but I think the upside is sky high. This is about the range of the draft where I think you could start to take on a risk like Michael King. I think we're getting a big breakout here in 2024. Scott, take us home with a bust at starting pitcher. Joe Ryan is my bust. From the very beginning, the profile was suspicious. He dominated in the minors but never ranked high among top prospects. 
uh, because it was kind of a gimmick he was using, a deceptive fastball, low velocity, optimal vertical approach angle, and he was just kind of able to spam hitters with that and dominate. Uh, he's tried to build a secondary arsenal, but there's not a lot there beyond that fastball, and I think the jig is up for Joe Ryan. So he had a he got off to a great start last year uh, with a 2.98 ERA through June 26, but then his final 14 starts a 6.62 ERA with 3.2 home runs per nine, which would have been a record by far over a full season. He got pummeled. He got pummeled. There was a health issue. That corresponded to that, but even after missing time, 479 ERA over his final seven starts. I'm just not sure the gimmick's working anymore for Joe Ryan, and there's not a lot for him to fall back on. And I completely agree on that call uh, with Joe Ryan as a bust. I also will be fading Aaron Nola this year, a 446 ERA or higher in two of the past three years. Strikeout rate, swinging strikes went down last year as well. Uh, more justifiable in a points league, but right now being drafted as a top 12 starting pitcher in roto or categories, there's just no way I'll be doing that uh, in fantasy baseball leagues. For more extens- uh, extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye.